Hello, Steve White, Steve White, 9 Well, I finally watched Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, the sequel to the original. It was released in 1987 in April, which kind of explains why it only made like $154,000. It was made on a budget of $250,000, which was less than the first film, which is $750,000, which is still pretty cheap. Um, it was it got a proper theatrical release, so it wasn't planned to be like a director video or anything like that. Um, it's very interesting. Um, it does try to be its own film in some ways, um, and it does do a good job of telling the story of the the villain, the the killer in the film, um, and he's ultimately not the real villain. Um, the real villain is the villain of the first film, which was the um, the mother superior, who um, was in charge of the orphanage that raised uh, essentially the first killer and the second killer. Um, now this film, the first, literally the first 40 minutes is flashbacks of the first film. Um, the film starts off with the younger brother of the killer from the first film, who was also orphaned and in the same um, orphanage, Ricky, um, being interviewed by a psychiatrist, a doctor, who basically gets his brother's life story, which literally takes the first 40 minutes as all just repeating scenes from the first film. Which is interesting, there are a couple of bits I forgot that when I was talking about my first little review. Um, like when Billy was still having nightmares after seeing his parents being killed by Santa Claus when he was a kid, he gets punished for it and the mother superior literally ties him to the bed because he keeps waking up and jumping out of bed and screaming and that and because that's one of the ways that she dealt with him. And another thing I forgot was um, on Christmas she forced him or tried to force him to sit on Santa's lap with all the other kids after his parents were killed by a man dressed as Santa Claus. Um, and he actually punches the guy, in the Santa, in the nose, knocks him back over in his chair, gives him a blood nose and runs off. And that's sort of where the um, his segment finishes when he's, a, when he's a kid in the first film, which I kind of forgot. But um, so we see all that again. And then the Ricky starts telling his life. So the film goes for um, one hour, 28 minutes. Uh, is about four minutes of credits, so he only gets about 44 minutes, really, of screen time. The rest of it's really just the, the first brother. Now, he starts off being adopted by... And I also forgot that he was he was the kid who was um, going to meet the Santa that got shot by the cop in the first film, and he was also there to see his brother, older brother, being killed and shot by the policeman. So I kind of forgot that, you know, he witnessed that as well. So he's got his own trauma... Now he gets adopted by a nice Jewish family. That I think are they called the Goldbergs? No, that would be too funny because that's the TV show. Um, I think I got the names confused. But yeah, so he doesn't have to deal with Santa anymore um, because of the religious differences. Um, they take they do a good job raising him on that level, but they never address his trauma. They never never address his issues on, on really. Um, so he just goes into adulthood and at some point gets triggered and snaps like his um, brother did. Um, now in this case he starts, he's working like normally, he tries to be a normal person, he meets a girl, but her ex-boyfriend shows up, he's a total douche, um, and he manhandles her in front of the, um, in front of Ricky, and yeah, Ricky literally shoves, because um, he was fixing his car um, when they bumped into him, he shoves the, um, the, um, the, um, what are the cables that, um, when you're charging your car battery? Um, he shoves those in his mouth and basically blows his eye out. Um, then he chokes the girlfriend who is freaking out because you just killed someone, what are you doing? And he just goes on a spree where he just takes the gun from... He got a gun from somebody and he just starts randomly shooting everyone he passes, except for a little girl who rides right up to him, nearly bumps into him and says, Oh, sorry, mister. And he said, That's okay. And then she just sort of turns a bit and goes in the opposite direction. I really thought he was going to kill her for a second because um, he was just shooting everyone. And then he goes to shoot himself and he's out of bullets. So he ends up in a um, psychiatric hospital, the doctor's interviewing him. And he goes through and tells that story. And um, then he kills the um, doctor off screen. And we see that he's dead and then we hear the recording of it later. And he goes to kill the mother superior. And I'm like, yes, kill the bitch. She deserves it. She's evil. Um, she created him, she created the brother, she abused them, she r used her religious, pushed their, her religious dogma and warped ideas of 
sex and religion and punishment on them and that's why they ended up as warped as they were, they could have, had they been in a government facility with actual um, therapy and that, maybe have been, you know, saved. Um, so yeah, he goes, but the, the other, I think it's the other um, nun from the first film is there trying to work out what's happening and working with the police and they know where he's going. So they rush to her house he breaks in, she starts running, she's in a wheelchair, so she starts, um, she barricades the door and then she goes through um, another room and out into a hall and she's trying to get away and then he actually goes to swing the axe at her and she, he misses her and she falls down the stairs and I'm like, great, she's dead. No, the bitch is still getting up. And I'm like, oh, just, I literally shouted, just fucking die, you old bitch, because I hate this woman. I hate this evil nun. I hate her for being, I hate her for the religious stuff, I hate her for what she did to them and that she just won't die. Um, so somehow she gets in another chair. I'm like, where was the other chair? Did she have a chair at the bottom of the stairs or something? Did she like switch out of them or something? I didn't see like a little, um, seat or something to take her down from one of the other, which she probably did have. Um, so she, then she goes in that room and then she's all, come and face me, get your punishment. I'm like, seriously, bitch? Number one, you just ran for half, for like two scenes. So what's this whole, I'm not afraid of you, come and face me. And then she's still talk, saying, I'm your mother superior, I raised you, you know, come here and get your punishment. And I'm like, this is, this, this woman is more evil than any, like, than Freddy or Jason or Leatherface or any of um, the villains in any of the horror movies I've ever seen. Um, and she's also literally a monster now because half her face is all rotted and distorted like she's been in some accident or something, it's, I, don't know, I don't know what it is, they just had to make her into a literal monster. And, yeah, he's standing over her with his axe and, you know, we cut and the police are running in and they come in and she's sitting there. And I'm like, oh, for f did she stab him and kill him? Are they going to see him on the floor? Because she did have a knife. I'm like, no, she didn't stab him while he had the axe up. No, it's not going to end that way. This bitch is going to die. And then the nun touches her on the shoulder and her head falls off. I'm like, yes, he cut her head off and put it back on, um, like a la many other um, screen killers who set up a scene. Um, and yeah, then he comes up with the cops, they shoot him through a window and, um, someone sort of wakes up the nun because he did attack the nun before they shot him. Um, and he's like, it's all over. And then she turns and sees the mother superior's head lying next to her, staring her in the eyes. She screams and then his eyes open and he wakes up. So, um, is he dead? Who knows? But he, I don't think he came back in the third film. They did three more films and a loose remake. Um, the first, the, the third, fourth, um, fifth films I saw on DVD, they came as a box set, um, because they were done by, I guess, another company, but the first two, I was never able to find them, I just found them on YouTube today, so I'm like, awesome, I finally get to watch these, you know, horror film Christmas movies on Christmas, it was pretty good, um, and yeah, the bitch got killed, I'm like, yes, a lot of the first two films, um, you know, created the first villains who really weren't the villains of the films, um, finally got it, so I was very satisfied, very happy with that. Um, you can't, yeah, you just can't see too many evil religious people being, you know, taken care of. Um, because they are pretty much the most evil people in the world. They create all the wars in the world, all the problems in the world pretty much come from religion. Um, so I have no respect, love, or tolerance for religion because it's just the most divisive and evil thing in creation. More evil than Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees. So I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think. I'm not going to watch the other films because if I remember correctly, they weren't great and they weren't, they were vaguely related to the first story. Um, but I am going to watch the classic um, Silent Night, Bloody Night, which came before this, which some people get them confused. I think that was the first horror themed Christmas movie, although it originally had a different film. I think it was Death House or something, but um, I'm going to do a bit of research on that and watch that next. And then there's another film, I think, about, was it Christmas Evil or something? There's like, I've basically went and found all the old, well, some of the old um, Christmas-themed horror movies, and I'm going to try and get through them all today and the next day, as well as getting through, so I'm going to do horror, horror, Christmas horror movies at night and regular Christmas movies during the day, and I'm going to try and get through a bunch that I've sort of heard of but never sort of gotten around to seeing, um, like Boxing Day and the next day, see how many I can get through. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe. Did I say that already? I don't know. I'm nearly at 10 minutes. Like, should I just talk for another 15 seconds and get to 10 minutes? I don't know. It seems like an even number. Um, yeah, I, I, I was really surprised by the first film. 
surprised by the second film as well in some bad ways because like i said it repeated like that's how it saved its money it repeated reused half the footage from the first film and but it did give us that confrontation we didn't really get the first film because the first film they were still treating the victim like the villain and the most evil person the character in the film who deserved to die the most the male superior didn't so i'm glad they gave us that at the end they knew what people wanted they knew what should have happened they fixed it so that's good so i'm gonna go 